the Hindenburg exploded in flames. And its cause remains unknown. It was one of the loudest disasters of the 20th century. On May 6, 1937, while landing at an American airfield in Lakehurst, the Hindenburg airship, a source of pride for Nazi Germany, burst into flames and crashed to the ground. The images film an account by Herbert Morrison, capturing the massive fireball engulfing the Hindenburg, sent shockwaves across the globe. The accident, which claimed the lives of 36 people, marked the beginning of the end of the era of the airship and is one of the most famous disasters in aviation history. The crash, however, was only the beginning of the story. The LZ-129 Hindenburg airship was a matter of great pride for Nazi Germany. This flying machine, put into service by the Zeppelin company in 1936, captured the world's attention. And not without reason, for it was truly an exceptional machine, as we learn from historical sources. LZ-129 was named in honor of Paul von Hindenburg, the president of Germany, from 1925 to 1934. It was the largest passenger airship in history, enabling transatlantic flights from Europe to the United States. The Hindenburg stretched an impressive 245 meters in length, with a diameter of 41 meters, making it nearly as large as the Titanic and comparable to the colossal skyscrapers of its time. In simple terms, it was enormous. With a capacity for 72 passengers and a crew of 61, it was powered by four diesel engines, each boasting 1,200 horsepower. The airship could reach a maximum speed of 135 kilometers per hour, featuring 70 passenger cabins, crew quarters, and numerous luxurious amenities on board. Inside the Hindenburg, the interiors were divided into three main areas, passenger decks, control car, and crew quarters. The passenger spaces were situated within the airship's hull, spanning across two decks known as Deck A and Deck B. Deck A of the Hindenburg featured a dining room that occupied the entire left side of the deck and was undoubtedly the playground for the wealthiest passengers. On the right side, there was a writing room and a lounge all elegantly appointed. The lounge even housed a grand 356-pound Bluthner piano. Originally, the Hindenburg boasted 34 cabins with double beds in the middle of Deck A, accommodating 70 passengers. While these cabins were compact, they were comparable to the sleeping compartments found on trains during that era. Each cabin on Deck A had a lower bunk fixed in place and an upper bunk that could be folded against the wall during the day. On both sides of Deck A, there were promenades with seating areas and large windows that could be opened during the flight. In later moments, the promenade would prove to be a lifesaver for many passengers as some of them escaped the burning deck through these very windows. Perhaps most surprising of all was the fact that the Hindenburg airship included a smoking room. Now, we have to remind you that the airship was filled with hydrogen, an extremely flammable substance. Any encounter with fire would result in an immediate explosion. The smoking room was maintained at a higher pressure than the surrounding air, ensuring that no leaking hydrogen could enter the space. Moreover, the smoking room and its adjoining bar were separated from the rest of the ship by a double airlock. The bar and the smoking room were bustling with activity day and night. Here, Max Scholz, the bartender and steward on the Hindenburg, served the famous LZ-129 Frosted Cocktails, a concoction of gin, orange juice, and Maybach 12, delighting passengers with every sip. As you can see, this was no ordinary airship. It was a luxurious deck that everyone would dream to be on. The ticket prices reflected this exclusivity. A one-way ticket from Germany to New Jersey cost a whopping $400 in 1937. That amount translated to a staggering $8,549.69 in today's currency. Although it might have been better for those people to just stay home or take a train. On May 3, 1937, carrying 97 passengers, the Hindenburg airship set off from Frankfurt over the River Main for its transatlantic journey. After 77 hours of flight, during an attempt to dock at the airport in Lakehurst, New Jersey, the Hindenburg caught fire. In just 37 seconds, it was completely engulfed in flames. 13 passengers, 22 crew members, and one ground crew member tragically lost their lives. 
However, miraculously, 62 individuals survived the explosion. Before we delve into the details of this event, we'd like to ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Now, let's get back to our story. The airship had just approached the mooring mast when the lines were dropped to the ground. At that moment, flames erupted at the tail and rapidly spread along the entire length of the hull. Within seconds, the entire outer covering was destroyed. The hydrogen inside caught fire. The airship was engulfed in flames and slowly descended onto the airfield, wrote Rodney Castelden in the book Natural Disasters That Changed the World, describing this tragic event. Meanwhile, other eyewitness accounts describe the story as follows. On board, there were 40 crew members, 21 trainees, and 36 passengers. The airship reached the American coast on the morning of May 6th, slightly delayed due to strong winds. The delay was extended as a severe storm passed over the Lakehurst landing site. Captain Max Pruss decided to circle over Manhattan, which stirred excitement among New Yorkers. At 6.22 p.m., he was informed that the storm had passed and landing was feasible. The landing procedure commenced at 7.09 p.m. Initially, everything proceeded as planned, but at 7.25 p.m., people on the ground saw flames erupting from the aircraft's stern. In a matter of seconds, the entire hydrogen-filled aircraft was caught in the fire and crashed to the ground. Some passengers, in a desperate attempt to save their lives, jumped out of the machine. Many survived only with broken legs. However, the overall toll was tragic. 36 people lost their lives, including 13 passengers, 22 crew members, and one ground crew member. The ship's captain survived but suffered severe burns as he rushed into the burning wreckage to save passengers. The most terrifying aspects are the recorded footage and even fragments of broadcasts from the moment of the tragedy, such as the most famous one by Herbert Morrison from the WLS radio station in Chicago. Just listen to the live account from that day now, just for a moment, to truly grasp what happened. It's like 20, oh, four or 500 feet into the sky, and it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen, the smoke and the flames now, and the flame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mass, all the humanity, and all the fans. Immediately after the catastrophe, sabotage rumors spread. Although the FBI quickly ruled out this possibility, the theory gained numerous followers. For decades, various potential scenarios were suggested, even including Adolf Hitler, who supposedly sought revenge because the Zeppelin management did not name the airship after him. A more credible theory suggested a hydrogen leak and subsequent ignition due to lightning strike, but even this theory has since been debunked. Today, we know that the accident was caused by a mooring line grounding the electrified airship, causing a discharge that ignited hydrogen leaking from the ballonets. Despite several other serious airship accidents before the Hindenburg disaster, some with higher casualties, none were captured on film and in photographs. It was the dramatic footage and images that circulated worldwide that definitively ended the era of massive airships, unable to compete with faster and more economical passenger airplanes. If you're enjoying our content and would like to see more similar video analyses of the world's greatest historical disasters, click here to watch our previous episode. Thank you very much for choosing to spend your time with us today. We'll see you in our next episode.